you have been tasked with applying conditional access policies for your company's current Azure Active Directory, Azure AD. The process involves assessing the risk events and risk levels. Which of the following is the risk level that should be configured for users that have leaked credentials? Your company has an Active Directory forest with a single domain named waylandindustries.com. They also have an Azure Active Directory, Azure AD, tenant with the same name. You have been tasked with integrating Active Directory and the Azure AD tenant. You intend to deploy Azure AD Connect. Your strategy for the integration must make sure that password policies and user logon and limitations affect user accounts that are synced to the Azure AD tenant and that the amount of necessary servers are reduced. Solution provided here for this question is you recommend the use of pass-through authentication and seamless SSO with password hash synchronization. Does the solution meet the goal? Hello and welcome to 591 Lab. I'm Jackton and I'm thrilled to have you here today as we dive into the exciting world of Microsoft Azure Security. In this video, we are going to focus on the AZ500 certification exam preparation questions which is all about the security solutions on Azure. If you are looking to elevate your skills in cloud security technology, understand how to secure your infrastructure, and ultimately achieve the AZ500 certification, you are, in the, you are in the right place. Whether you are an IT professional, a system administrator, or someone passionate about cloud security computing, this training series is designed to provide you with the knowledge and insight needed to excel in your Azure cloud security journey. So essentially, we will cover key concepts around Azure AD Connect and conditional access policies. So before we begin, just uh, make sure, I have a request, make sure to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell and give this video a thumbs up if you find it uh, quite helpful. So first and foremost, who are we? We are 591 Lab and our site is 591lab.com, pronounced as 591lab. 591lab Lab is the top IT training and certification exam brand in China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and Singapore. Our mission at 591lab is to provide our clients with exceptional exam preparation experience for certifications in Cisco, Huawei, Aruba, Juniper, Microsoft, and Azure certification tracks. So without further ado, let's jump right into the AZ500 uh, sample questions and also try to check on the agenda first of all. So the agenda today for that is going to form part three of this particular AZ500 series is going to be edged on the managed identity and access. So under managed identity and access, we are going to talk about Azure AD Connect and conditional access policies. So let's begin with uh, the first question. You have been tasked with applying conditional access policies for your company's current Azure Active Directory, Azure AD. The process involves assessing the risk events and risk levels. Which of the following is the risk level that should be configured for users that have leaked credentials? So first and foremost um, this question is talking about conditional access policies conditional access policies are used to uh, provide for example if you want to provide trim down security measures uh, within your azure ad uh, an example would be for example uh, if you want to block users accessing certain applications or you want to monitor how your applications are being accessed from different uh, by, by different users or within, within the organization and from what locations are they accessing these applications from. So you can get to trip down monitoring of those access uh, to these applications using the conditional access policies. So I will take you to uh, the Azure portal and then I will explain how to uh, the, where the conditional access policies are found. So 
with a conditional access policy so you go to microsoft entra conditional access policy right now it's microsoft entra it used to be called azure ad conditional per, uh, conditional access policies so under conditional access you under the left pen here you'll see we have policies that we can do config we can configure policies as to how access needs to be uh, granted within our environment we also have uh, we can do management of um, access to our applications from named application custom new custom controls vpn connectivity uh, uh, and also from monitoring perspective we can monitor how users are accessing our applications that have been hosted within our uh, environment so to implement these conditional access policies there's usually at the levels so you can have a medium uh high as per the the risks uh, involved so i'll bring up these activities signing activities and show you the risk levels that are involved so for example uh the signing activity for example the users with leak credentials if a user has been um the, the user's credentials have been leaked, for example, within the dark web. So that risk level is categorized by the conditional access policies to be high. And instant measures will be taken as per the policies that you configured. Uh, if at all uh, that uh, threshold or activity, signing activity is met. And then secondly, we have signings from anonymous IP addresses. So for example, uh, you, you you've secured your user in that you know that your users need to be logging in from um from a, a particular set of ip addresses if you see within your signing logs activities that a certain ip is not matching as per the ip addresses that you define then this risk level is categorized at the medium and then we have the impossible travel to a typical locations this involves a situation whereby a user for example logs in in uh, in japan and then after after an hour or even after 30 30 minutes you see the same same user logging in from let's say united states of america so that is very impossible for one to log in in japan and then after 30 minutes he logs in again when in U united states so that is usually being tracked down when you use uh, conditional access policies you can use conditional access policies to track that down and be able to tell that this is a, a signing activity that is not right and there's something fishy going on with that particular account so as per the policies that you've set you can uh say for example if such a situation is detected for example block the user from accessing or you trigger mfa yeah for example and then the other case is signings from infected devices if a user's device is detected to be uh, an infected device the risk level here you, by the virtue of user signing in from this particular infected device then in this case the risk level is said to be medium in this regard so another one is signings from ip addresses with suspicious activity so this is usually this could be IP, the way you've whitelisted IPs and uh, if an IP, uh, user logs in from a, an IP that you, for example, you, you've not categorically addressed that it needs to access applications, then that risk level should be uh, categorized to be low. And then we have signings from unfamiliar locations. So let's say uh, you, 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 your users, as per the the, uh, the heuristics that have been collected the users your users are normally logging in from let's say japan always and then all of a sudden a user logs in from united states of america so that 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 in essence it's it's not very it's not very risky though then but in this regard the system captures it that it is used to people logging in or the users logging in from japan so this all of a sudden someone logging in from united states that will be tracked down and an alarm will be raised so that risk level is usually categorized to be medium so i'll go to the azure portal under risk levels and then i'll be able to 
um, categorically. So let's say, for example, when I go to sign in logs, under sign in logs, you'll see, for example, uh, I have it shows me how what how how many sign-ins have been done to my environment. So you can see uh, sign-in by this user, Jack Tone, uh, from uh, telling me from what application, and then status, it's success. Uh, then it tells me from what IP addresses have, have I logged in. So it's telling me everything here. So uh, then in that regard, I'll be able to categorically say, okay, as per this login, then I can be able to trim down uh, last 24 hours where I can even say I want to do a custom time interval. And then to get this risk levels, to get this risk level, you need to have Azure Active Directory Premium P, uh, P2 license. So when you go to your AD, uh, let me go to Microsoft Enter ID, you need to have these licenses, this premium Microsoft Entra ID P2. This is where this is the highest level of Azure AD SKU, where you have all the uh, the capabilities of AI inbuilt for security measures. So, for you to take into account the risky signings, you need to have the Entra ID P2 licenses. So, when I go back to conditional access policies. So I'm going to demonstrate, my demo is going to revolve around how to implement, how to configure signing risk-based Azure conditional access policies. So let's assume we have a web application that is published by the internet. To access the services, the user has to provide a username and a password. So if one of the user's account is compromised, how the system can differentiate the legitimate access and illegal access from the system point of view, as long as someone provides a valid username and password, system will allow access. But if you can analyze user access behavior and detect anomalies, potentially we will be able to detect illegal access attempts. As an example, let's assume the user is always login from Canada. The user logged into the system at 10 a.m. successfully. By 11 a.m., the system detects another authentication attempt from United Kingdom for the same user. As you can see, this behavior is suspicious, and if the system can detect this automatically, we can prevent a possible illegal access attempt. So, what comes in here is a sign-in risk-based Azure conditional access policies, which will help organizations to review user sign-in behaviors and detect risks. Then based on risk levels, which we've discussed, organization can either block the user or enforce actions such as multi-factor authentication to prove the identity. Then again, so these categorization of the sign-in risk that we've talked about, the levels, the four levels are high, medium, low, or no risk, as, as we've seen here. High, medium, low, or no risk at all. So, so we can use one or more sign-in risk levels with a conditional access policy, doesn't matter. So an example will be anonymous IP address. So how do we, how do we calculate this, con, uh, this risk? So what I mean to say is due to security reason, for example, Microsoft does not provide you exact details how the risk levels are calculated. However, Microsoft says the following, events contribute on risk level calculation so these events the following events that i'm going to mention for example anonymous ip address anonymous ip address this risk detection type indicates signings from anonymous ip for example tor browser or anonymous vpn this detection type is real time because it is uh, as, uh, as, of, as, as of the time the user is logging in it detected uh, another one is another detection type is a, a typical travel. A typical travel district detection type identifies two signings originating from geographically distant location. The way I'd mentioned, someone logging in Japan and then after 30 minutes they are logging in from United Kingdom. So these uh, this is usually under detection type. This is usually offline. 
and then we have malware linked ip addresses this also offline and familiar sign-in properties this is real time because now this risk detection type considered fast sign in history so that is real time and then we have password free but that the attackers get to use this is usually offline and then again malicious ip addresses this as well is usually offline so let's get to the po uh, portal where we are now and then configure conditional access policies so to configure conditional access policies we need to go to our microsoft enter id after going to our microsoft enter id we'll go to security so let, let me take you there so we'll go to microsoft enter id which is our azure ad and then you come to secondly come to security and then under security you can see we have our conditional access policies there so you click on conditional access okay after clicking under conditional access the fifth step that you're going to do is click create new policy okay create new policy okay now so here i'm going to name the policy for example um uh 591 lab 591 lab in risk okay and then i go to the second now assignments assignments i'm going to specify users or groups i'm going to select group i already have a group so under group i'm going to say users and groups and then i'm going to select my group so i selected i have a group called sales and marketing so i select this group I go ahead select that group okay and then after doing that i go uh i go to the target after selecting that i go to the next step which is the the, the target resources so target resources so target resources are, i'm going to say for example all cloud applications okay and then after selecting that me call from my cloud application and then i go to my condition so under condition you can see sign in risk user risk device platform so i'm going to select in this case we are implementing sign in risk so as i discussed sign in risk user risk all these two require user to have a premium p2 license so i go to sign in risk and then I say control user access to respond to specific signing risk levels. Say yes, configure. And then I select on high and medium. Then I say done. Then I, I come here, access controls, I grant. And access control, I grant. So I'll say if that is detected, if high risk or medium risk is, detect, is detected, require multi-factor authentication. Or I, I can say uh re require authentication strength so require authentication strength see if i need to select one if i choose this i don't i cannot choose the other one so I, if i choose that I require multi-factor authentication then i say select that and then under session i'll choose the session okay i'll i'll say use for example any any here control access based on session control i say sign in frequency so I say, for example, periodic authentication, I say one, and then select units, I say hours, and then I say select. And then under now here, lastly, I say enable policy, it will either report only, meaning that it won't be implemented immediately, it will just be reporting. And then when I say on, it will be active. And then if it is off, meaning it won't be implemented immediately. So I go ahead and say, if I turn it on, I say create. So okay, saying security defaults must be enabled to enable control access policy. So of course, I'll need to go to home. Let me go there. Security defaults. So I go to Microsoft Entry ID. Security defaults. I go to properties. 
scroll down and then manage security defaults then click here disable and then say just other reason uh, demo no purposes say save say disable so that's done so i go back under my conditional access policy go back microsoft enter id security conditional access policy create uh, click on give it a name 591 lab sign in risk policy this one assignments assign the group select group i'll sign my my group and i had a group called sales sales I select that group okay then go to target resources the target resources i say all cloud applications and then i go to conditions i say sign in risk that's the condition it sign give it then i say high and medium done then i go to access controls go there say grant tax i'll say if that high medium is detected or high or medium uh, risk level is detected just grant access but require mfa then select session sign in risk sign in frequency say one and hours then i select then these as explained before then i go ahead and create the policy validates it has already created so if i refresh here you'll see the policy is created here so if i go to policies yes my policy 591 lab is the policy so i can make changes as required so if we go to our question so question one saying the process involved assessing the risk events and risk levels which of the following is the risk level that should be configured for users who have leaked credentials so as we've seen users with the leaked credentials this is very high severity that needs to be needs to be be checked so the answer here is d hi john azure ad connect so the question goes your company has an active directory forest with a single domain named waylandindustries.com you also have an azure active directory azure ad tenant with the same name you have been tasked with integrating active directory and the azure ad tenant you intend to deploy azure ad connect your strategy for the integration must make sure that password policies and user logon and limitations affect user accounts that are synced to the azure ad tenant and that the amount of necessary servers are reduced solution provided here for this question is you recommend the use of pass-through authentication and seamless sso with password hash synchronization does the solution meet the goal so before we answer this question let's go to our whiteboard so for for starters you'll find that within azure ad uh, you can get to connect uh, the two ad's that is existing on the on premises and azure active directory so we have on premises and we have on the azure side on on premises we have what we call the active directory on azure side we have what we call azure ad azure ad to make these two ad's talk to each other we usually connect them using azure ad connect a tool called azure ad connect azure ad connect this is the tool we use to connect these two ad's so what happens in this case is that there are for example modalities of connecting these two ad's so one you can choose to go with what we call 
uh, pass through authentication pass through authentication two you can choose to go with a password hash synchronization password hash synchronization three you can choose to go with uh, active directory federation services adfs I'm going to dwell so much on the first two pass through authentication and password hash uh, password hash synchronization so with pass through authentication the authentication uh, component uh, where the users are authenticated from they are authenticated from the Azure AD not not, not from the Azure AD I mean from the active directory on premises so these users are authenticated from Active Directory that exists on the on-premises. That is, if you've implemented the Azure Act AD Connect using the pass-through authentication. So what happens is, if at all the users want to access the applications that are sitting on the cloud side, the their login credentials will be authenticated from the on-premise on-premises side. Then is when that, that you can go ahead and access the application sitting on the Azure side. So here the source of truth for the users logging in to applications that you, you, you have on the cloud side and whenever you've implemented Azure AD Connect, the source of truth here for them uh, when you use password authentication is, uh, is the Active Directory side. That is the source of truth. So with password hash synchronization, it's sort of different. Password hash synchronization in this modality the user's credentials are hashed in that the credentials are stored on Azure AD side. The credentials are stored, are stored on this other end. So meaning the point of truth for users who are signing into applications, who are logging into application is on the Azure AD side if you have password hash synchronization. So the hashes, the hash of the hashes of the passwords that for these particular users that are seen from the on-premises are stored on Azure side. So you will find that with password hash synchronization, it is very straightforward, uh, and it is you, you don't have to introduce another server in the mix. But with pass-through authentication, you'll have to introduce another server. For example, where you are going to install the agent on the on-premises side, because with uh, with AD side, you'll have to install an agent with the now with password authentication you will have to install an agent this is introducing another overhead for managing uh, the authentic uh, authentication but with password through authentication as i discussed it's very quite it's quite straightforward you just sync the uh, credentials and the credentials are stored on the azure uh, side i'll go to the azure portal and demonstrate on how to implement azure ad connect before I go to the to the portal to demonstrate, let me draw the architecture of what we have on the Azure side, on the Azure portal side. So the architecture that I do have is I've simulated an environment where we have a virtual machine. We have a VM. So this VM has got uh, Active Directory DS services, Active Direct Domain services installed. And also inside here, I've, I've installed Azure AD Connect, Azure AD Connect. So this, after installing the AD Connect and the ADDS services here, this AD Connect is connecting the services here to the Azure AD. It's connecting that AD to Azure AD. So the Azure AD Connect is ensuring there's a connection of the ADD services that have been installed in, inside this VM to the Azure AD side. So I'll demonstrate to you if I create a user created here, a user created that, uh, created inside the VM where the ADDS is, you will see this user on the Azure AD side or the Microsoft Entra. So let me go to my lab. My lab. So here I go back. When Let's start with the virtual machine. So this is the virtual machine that I created where the AD Connect is resisting and the, and the ADDS services. So you can see this is the VM. 
that has got all those uh, components I'm talking about. So if you log in and go to that VM in particular, this is it. Um, so you can see under roles and services, I've installed ADDS, ADDS uh, services inside this particular uh, virtual machine. And then again, you can see, you can also see I've installed Azure AD Connect inside this uh, virtual machine. So to install Azure AD Connect inside this virtual machine, you just say uh, Azure AD Connect download. So you go and download the AD Connect so you can see the download button, then you can download the AD Connect. So here, when I take to Microsoft Entra ID, so under Microsoft Entra ID, if we go to Azure AD Connect, uh, Microsoft Azure AD Connect, Microsoft Entra Connect, and then I go to Connect Sync. So you'll see Connect Sync here, Sync status is enabled, meaning that my on-premises on or of the Active Directory domain services that are configured within my virtual machine are uh synchronizing with my microsoft entra uh id microsoft entra connect so the way we can know this is for example if we go to users you'll see um the authorization the connection on premise sync enabled so you'll see like for example this user jackson on data this user on it if you check here on premise sync enabled it's saying here no this means this user is a cloud user is is only created it was only created on the azure ad side meaning it was not created on the on-premises side if you check this john allen john allen if you say on-prem if you check on-premise sync enabled yes meaning this user was created on the on-premises active directory so if i take you back to our vm and then i go to use uh, computers users and computers You'll see here, there's John, John, John Allen. John Allen is a user who is created within our Active Directory here. And so you can see he has been, uh, that user is synced to our Active Microsoft Entra ID. So this, this is how Azure Active Directory uh, Connect, Azure AD Connect gets to work with, uh, with the Azure AD in uh, by connecting the two uh, active directories so if we go back to the question back to the question you'll see uh, the question was asking you recommend the use of pass through authentication and seamless single sign in password high synchronization remember the question was revolving around uh, decreasing the touch points the strategy for integration must make sure the password policies and user logon limitations affect user account that are synchronous as a tenant and that the amount of necessary servers are reduced. As seen, we've seen that pass through, you'll have to introduce another server where you'll install the agent, for example. But with password high synchronization, you don't have to introduce any other server. So for this question, it doesn't meet, does the solution meet the goal? No. So this solution doesn't meet the goal because it introduces another unnecessary servers that we don't, we, it's not required. We only need to do password hash synchronization and single sign on alone. So, thank you. I want to thank you all for attending today's class at 591 Lab. We hope you found the material informative and helpful. Remember, practice is critical to mastering any new skill. So, review the course content and keep practicing with 591 Lab. Help and support. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to contact us. We appreciate your participation and look forward to seeing you in our future classes. Have a great day.